Episode 2, Platypus Reproduction and Development. Before we begin, let's recap what we've learned from the previous episode. Monotremes are oviparous, there are currently three living species, and the oldest discovered platypus fossil is Telenophos trustleri, and the platypus and echidnas were believed to have diverged about 21 to 25 million years ago. In this episode, we will discuss the breeding seasons, explain the reproductive behaviours, touch on the fertilisation and hatching process, discuss platypus lactation, and highlight the literature's suggested improvements for breeding success in captivity. The platypus breeding season typically falls between July to October. Interestingly, platypuses in Queensland tend to breed the earliest, followed by those in New South Wales and Tasmania. During breeding season, the reproductive organs of male and female platypuses increase in size, starting as early as June, reaching its peak in August to October. In males, sperm production is controlled by the gonadotrophic hormones from the pituitary glands and androgens, which increases the size of the testes and epididymides and the venom glands, causing increased levels of aggression. While in females, the hormone progesterone increases and reaches a peak between August to September before declining during October. This hormone supports the uterus lining during pregnancy and ensures nutrients are passed down from the secretory glands to the developing embryo inside the egg. During breeding season, the female platypus will change its behaviour from avoidance to initiating contact with the males. During breeding season, the platypus also exhibits a number of complex courtship processes as shown on the right. The male tends to initiate contact with the female, but whether copulation takes place, this all depends on the female's receptivity. Courtship activities often include increased body contact, males biting the female's tails, and also tight circling, which can last up to a minute to half an hour over several days. Once the female accepts a partner, copulation begins. Shown on the bottom right, the male will approach the female from behind, curl his tail on the female, and rest his chest on her back. After successful copulation, the female will then focus her energy to build and renovate the nest using wet material and vegetation. It has been reported that the process takes about 3-5 to five days. The burrows, as shown on the right, are complex and contain networks and chambers that are 3-30 to 30 meters in length near undercut banks. Scientists also believe that the vegetation in the nests also serve an important purpose by creating a humid environment in the nest to prevent eggs and nestlings from desiccating. Quick quiz! A platypus is called a A. Muggle B. A cuddle or C. A puggle The answer is C. Puggle Fertilisation and Hatching After fertilisation, the egg in the female platypus will form a single egg layer which will then pass down the oviduct to the uterus, where the glands in the uterus wall will add two extra shell layers, supply nutrients, and also help the egg to grow to roughly 14 millimeters in diameter by 17 millimeters in length. The platypus can lay up to three eggs, has a gestation period somewhere between 15 to 21 days, an incubation period up to 12 days, and about and after about 133 days, the juvenile, also known as a puggle, will emerge from the nest. Interestingly, the females tend to emerge earlier than the males. The reason why is still currently unknown. Lactation in the platypus occurs for 3-4 to four months and has shown to occur longer in captivity compared to the wild. Milk is produced in the mammary glands and collects on the skin in two milk patches, also known as the areolae, since the lacnipples. The female's feeding rate is positively correlated with high energy demands during the late lactation period. It is being reported that the daily intake could reach up to 90-100% to of its body weight. The platypus can breed up to the age of 13. However, in captivity, the platypus has shown to exhibit delayed reproductive behaviour until the ages of 6.2, compared to its counterparts of the wild, which can breed from the age of 2 years old. Two strategies which have been suggested to improve breeding success in captivity include bringing young platypus into captivity as soon as possible to facilitate successful transition and reduce established home ranges, and secondly, introducing both the females and the males as soon as possible to increase familiarity. Interesting fact, did you know that the male platypus has 5X and 5Y chromosomes, while females only have 5 pairs of X chromosomes? Want to test your knowledge? Go to our blog now and complete exercise 2 for this episode. The link is in the description below.